This is the Demystifying Mental Toughness Podcast, hosted by David Charlton, and you're listening to this podcast to help you build your own mental toughness, or so that you can support other people or your clients better. Either way, you will learn more about developing this plastic personality trait that all but guarantees that you will perform better and lead a more prosperous life. Hi, and welcome back to the Demystifying Mental Toughness podcast with your host, David Charlton. Today, I'm going to take you on a journey. We're going to have a look back at 2021 with it being our last episode of the year. And I'm going to try and help you learn from the past year so that in 2022, you can make it one of your best years yet. I'm going to talk through a variety of different exercises and ask you some very important questions so that you can look in the mirror and really try to seek some answers from yourself. Firstly, before we get started, I do want to express my gratitude to you, the listener, and to the guests that I've had on this podcast over the last 12 months. It's been a thoroughly enjoyable journey. When I started the podcast back in 2019, I had no idea of the impact it could have on people's lives. The reach has amazed me. Personally, I've learned so much and continue to do so. So to say I'm grateful, is an understatement. Now to this episode. As I've mentioned on a number of podcast episodes, a part of mental toughness, which many people aren't necessarily aware of, is learning orientation. This is a small part in the mental toughness model organized by Professor Peter Clough. It's all about seeking the learning from what you do as an athlete, a coach, a parent, a sports psychologist, a business professional. And yeah, mental toughness can be falsely thought of as a trait. It can be often thought about getting your head down and simply getting on with things. But as you'll be aware, if you've listened to my ramblings, it's a lot more complex than that. So where do we start? Well, I'm going to start with the question why. Why is it that you do what you do? If you play golf, why? If you coach football, why? If you're a sports psychologist, why? If you love swimming in the freezing cold temperatures in December and January in the sea, why? And why would you do that? I'm going to help you a little bit with this question and I'm going to give you some clues. It might be that you want to stay fit. It might be that you love developing new skills. You love competing. You love the banter of being in a team sport, being around friends, perhaps if you're a coach or a sports psychologist, it might be a case of you enjoy helping others, or it might be the winning, the competitive bit. Or if you went into endurance sports, it might be the pain. You might actually love the pain and pushing through that. The list goes on. And to help you more so with that exercise, you will find in the show notes a checklist that can help you with the question and help guide you. Why is this important? Well, If you go through tough times, if you lose form, if your team goes on a losing run, it's very easy to forget your why. The nature of sport means that you can lose more often than you actually win, which again can really hurt your why. We can get caught up in day-to-day life and not take the time to consider it. So your job right now, now that you've considered your why, is to think back over 2021 and consider the periods when you've been true to this why, when you were aligned to it, and when you weren't at all. And if you want to dig deeper, if you've got a pen and a bit of paper handy, I'd encourage you to put a chart together. If it's an A4 sheet for argument's sake, you might want to turn it round to landscape view as opposed to portrait. And you could plot on the left-hand side of this bit of paper, January, and on the right-hand side, December. On the top half of the sheet, What I'd like you to do is plot your successes all the way through the year. And on the bottom half of the sheet, you put those difficult moments, the failures, the mistakes, the challenges. It's a simple exercise and it can really help you take a step back and begin to learn some of these lessons. And if you do this to the best of your ability, go into detail. You can also connect with the previous question about the why, the why you do the things that you do. And it can reaffirm some learnings there. So give it a shot. Go on. And now to build on what you've done so far, 
to really get concrete, clear on your why and what's important to you, we're going to do a what's called a funeral exercise. And this comes courtesy of James Hegarty, whom I interviewed in episode 92. It should take you about five to 10 minutes to complete, and it's going to give you a much better understanding of how you want to live your life, how you want to coach, how you want to perform in your sport. You'll also have a greater insight of what others will witness should you behave in the way that you decide upon. Additionally, you're going to gain some clarity on who you regard as influential people in your life. So we're going to have a little bit of relaxation now. You might not be able to do this right now, but certainly consider doing it after the podcast's finished. Ideally, I would like you to find a quiet space, somewhere that you're unlikely to be disturbed. You would place your mobile phone on silent or switch it off. So if you're driving a car, please don't do this exercise right now and certainly don't do it if you're flying a helicopter. Somewhere basically where you can relax on a sofa or lying on a bed is where you would do this exercise. And I'd like you to close your eyes and take some deep breaths. Notice your stomach rising as you breathe in and slowly releasing as you breathe out, bringing your attention to the fact that you're breathing. You're not manipulating your breath, but simply experiencing it as the air moves in and out of your body, directing your attention to your stomach and feeling the sensations in that region as your breath comes into your mind and as you let go. And when you feel ready to, you can shift the focus of your attention to the back of your head, moving it away from your stomach and becoming aware of whatever the feelings are in this region of your body. The back of your head may feel heavy or light, warm or cold. It's not important what it feels like and you should experience this in your own time and in your own way as you move your attention to your neck and shoulders. Again, noticing how they feel. Are the shoulders tight? A lot of people carry a lot of stress there on their shoulders. Or are they feeling strong? So relax and comfortably simply notice what they look like. And as you begin to relax, I'd like you to imagine that you are present at your own funeral or celebration of your life. That's right, it's not really a pleasant thought, but please stick with it. Research suggests that contemplating our mortality has its benefits, and it does so in this exercise. So you're imagining the surroundings that your funeral is likely to take place in. The building, the outside of the building, the inside. You may notice trees, the colour of brickwork, people milling around. And in the inside, you might notice flowers different objects in the building. You're simply noticing the environment. You're noticing the people present at your funeral. And as you do so now, you could choose three people to stand up in front of the attendees to say a few words about you. And these people are likely to be important people in your life. They might be alive or dead and not even born yet. And when you're deciding on those people, consider what they're likely to be wearing at the funeral. You'll have a clear picture in your mind as they choose to stand up and address everyone in attendance. You'll see them standing there confidently or nervously. They may be tearful, depending on their personality traits. So simply let your imagination run wild as you now ask yourself the question, how would I like them to talk about me? So not the reality, not what they would say today, or how you think they see you. It's how would I like them to talk about me? And play this over in your head, considering those three people, what they're wearing, how they introduce themselves, and how they talk about you, how you would like them to talk about you. And I've had it where different clients have had a giggle at this. They found it quite hilarious doing this exercise, but they did find it very powerful too. It really helps us start to reaffirm our core values. Many people acknowledge this exercise as very grounding and it helps them remain present. So now building on this task, again, we're going to do a short visualization exercise. So again, please don't do this if you're driving a car. You might want to skip this part. So building on the previous task, again, relax, close your eyes, take some deep breaths, 
allowing your stomach to soften and relax. And I'd like you to take yourself back to your funeral. We're going to skip forward a little bit now. And I'd like you to notice your tombstone. Notice where it may be situated, perhaps in a large or a small graveyard, or close to some beautiful views. There might be trees nearby, flowers placed alongside it. There's no right way or wrong way. It's your choice. Your job now is to consider some words that may be written on your tombstone. So think back to the previous exercise where we asked that question, how would I like them to talk about me? So please try and connect the dots there. The sentence on your tombstone or sentences on your tombstone should link closely with how you would like to be seen and known when you pass away. You should be getting closer to what's important in your life and your sport now. And this exercise can really help you clarify what really matters to you and help you establish these values and what decisions actually align with them. So now we're going to do a final exercise, which you can do with your eyes open and doesn't include any relaxation. It's decision time now. It's for you to decide what your personal core values actually are the things that you really believe in, in your life. And personal core values can exist at home, in your sport, at work, any area of your life. They should go on to determine your priorities. And although they're not, and although they're not measurable, you will be able to see if you're sticking to these values or if any conflicts go on to influence your actions. Often when our values are conflicted, We might be short-tempered, stressed, less focused, overwhelmed, anxious. And then in a sporting context, athletes, their practice, their training is going to be less efficient. When it comes down to their commitment levels, they might not rock up on time. They might find it difficult to put in extras to master the task in hand. Their concentration might be poor too. They might become more self-critical. Frustration and anger might be more evident all these factors. So your values are vitally important. So to make an effort to recognize and identify your values, as we've talked about there, it's going to help your decision making on and off the field, the pitch, the course, in your work. And your values are likely to change throughout your life as your different priorities shift. If you have family like myself, or depending on the level that you're potentially playing your sport, or If you're potentially trying to qualify as a sports psychologist, it's going to shift. So your job now is to to think about your top 10 personal core values. So that's right. Your core values reflect what is important in your life. In the show notes, I'm going to help you with a very, very long list where there's a range of different words to guide you. I'll give you some ideas to start with now. So here are some words that link to values might be adventure, achievement, calm, challenge, compassion, creativity, humility, honesty, results, professionalism, speed, strength, honesty, excellence, perfectionism. All those words can be linked to values. So as I say, have a good look in the show notes. The words that I've put down there they're really going to help you get clear on your values. And after you've done that exercise, really have a think about if you follow through with these values, how it's going to make you feel, how fulfilled are you going to be, how proud of yourself are you going to be? You will note that values, as I've said, they're not goals. They can't be achieved. They're better viewed as signposts pointing you in a certain direction. So imagine walking up a large mountain, Ben Nevis, somewhere like that, where they're often signposts pointing you in different directions. It's very easy to make a wrong turn. And should you choose the wrong way, it's going to make your ascent much longer. Also, climbing up a mountain, they can be never end. It can feel like it's a never ending journey, especially on those extremely steep parts. The same is true of your values, but they're there to guide us in a direction that we want to travel. But we can, as I've mentioned, be guided off course by other things happening in our life, poor form, pressures from other people, from above, by results. Values are purposely pretty vague. Every person on the planet's values are going to differ. For one person, fun might be watching a movie. 
to uh, to somebody else. It could be spending some time with friends. Ambition to some coaches could be to study and find ways to improve their coaching by knowing more about biomechanics. Whereas to another coach, it could be traveling overseas regularly to observe how other coaches and teams operate. It's really important when trying to discover your values that they come from you personally, not from a coach, a psychologist, a family member, a friend. Your values are yours. They've got to be very, very meaningful to you. So you've completed these exercises. You've got an idea about values. I'm really hoping now that you're much more clear about you and how you're going to go about 2022. Have a good think about what others will see in you. What behaviours they're going to see if you live out these values in 2022. How it's going to influence your life. How it's going to influence your sport and your development. Linking back to mental toughness now and learning orientation, the individual who responds positively most of the time to challenges. So linking back to mental toughness and learning orientation, a person who's very good at learning from mistakes will take the time to do these exercises. And then come 2022, they're more likely to respond in a positive way when challenges and opportunities come about in the new year. When unexpected events occur, they're not going to be thrown too far off course. And when inevitably setbacks and mistakes occur, they're not going to worry too much about it. They're going to extract the learning from this. And that's the importance of doing these exercises and really understanding your why. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. You've learned a lot more about you and how you're going to live 2022. Please do get in touch with me. If you've got any comments or any suggestions on what I can learn to take the podcast to the next level in 2022, I wish you a happy and healthy new year. If you enjoyed this episode of the Demystifying Mental Toughness podcast with David Charlton, do check out my website, sport-excellence.co.uk and my online sport psychology resources. Sport Hyphen Excellence website has essential resources for anyone looking to build their own mental toughness or the mental toughness of their athletes or teams, or if you want to achieve peak performance more often or optimal functioning. The Sport Excellence website has everything you need to keep moving forward and thrive. So go on, head over to sport-excellence.co.uk to find out more.